You live in the same day Over and over everybody, how's it going? Let's talk about your home recording studio. Today, I'm excited about this one. We are going to take a look at what's inside this box here. So let's crack this open right real quick. And here we go. This is a Motu M4, a 4 in, 4 out audio interface. These are pretty new and they really just kind of uh, piqued my curiosity. I was really curious about it because I had bought a uh, Native Instruments Complete Audio 6 to do my, just kind of recording for my channel. Uh, that's what you're, that's what I'm recording through now. And this is definitely a direct competitor to that feature for feature. And I was kind of curious if maybe I would um, replace my KA6 with this thing. Let's actually crack open this box and take a look at the unit itself. I do kind of like this. They just give you like a, a quick getting started guide printed right on the, the lid of the box. That's actually pretty good. Got the unit itself here. Let's get him out of there. Looks like the only thing in the box. You got some safety information. And I have a feeling the USB cable. Yep, there he is. Uh, USB type C cable, which is uh, interesting. All right. All right, we'll get the box out of the way here. So we'll keep the cable out. Let's get this guy out of his package. All right, all right, well, here we go. So let's see here. We have got on the, uh, on the front panel, we've got a couple of TRS uh, combo XLR uh, inputs. Looks like they each have a gain knob. Yeah, not too crazy about the way the knob feels. It's kind of wobbly. They each have individual 48-volt uh, phantom power. That's uh, cool, so you don't have to turn it on for everything if you don't want to. And then they each have a monitor switch, so I take it that's going to be our toggle for direct monitoring. We've got a kind of a gradient dial here for our direct monitor, so all the way this way, it's uh, just monitoring direct off the inputs. All the way this way, it's completely play playback off of the DAW. And you can kind of blend it in there to get your taste dialed in. Looks like we have a input monitor mix to switch over to monitor uh, inputs three and four. We've got a, a main volume output, uh, or monitor output. I like the feel of that dial. It feels pretty nice. Uh, we've got a headphone out as well. So I like the feel of that dial as well. Not as much wobble. These are just kind of, like, especially that one. That one feels terrible, honestly. The rest of them feel okay, but that input one, it's kind of wobbly. I don't know if there's a loose nut in there or something. Something came loose in shipping, but yeah, that feels terrible. And then, of course, we have this uh, little kind of one-inch uh, LCD display. I'm going to be really curious about that. Just the, you know, the marketing materials, even the picture on the front of the box uh, look pretty nice. Uh, all right, on the top, yeah, we got our mark of the unicorn logo. Says it's a M4. Let's take a quick look at the back. And on the back, ooh, look at that, a power switch. Imagine that. I'm not sure that I've used any interface in this price range uh, that actually has a power switch on it. So that is a cool feature. We got five pin MIDI in and out. We have USB-C connectivity, so that's what the uh, little USB cable we'll plug into. Uh, we have a couple of line outputs that are unbalanced. Uh, that's kind of, oh yeah, okay. And they, they also have a balanced version over here. That's cool. We have our main monitor out unbalanced or main monitor out balanced. Okay. All right. I like it. And then we have our extra couple of line ins on the back. So yeah, four in, four out. So we got two inputs on the front, two line inputs on the back, and we've got uh, four line outputs on the back. All right, just looking at it, I, I like it, honestly. I, I like the, uh, the size. It is definitely uh, smaller than my KA6. Actually, I wonder if I can get this thing out without, <clears throat> if all the recording goes uh, you know blank all of a sudden, you'll know what happened. But he's, uh, he's plugged in and, and actually working <laughs> at the moment. Oh, actually, you know what? They're about the same size. 
you know, the, the Mark of the Unicorn, just a little bit smaller, but pretty comparable in size all in all. All right, let's take a quick look at this USB cable. Um, I have, this is my first interface that I've ever used that didn't just use the traditional kind of USB A to USB B. Um, so they give you, wait, what is this? This thing is like, it's, it's like a three foot cable. <laughs> that's, um, okay. Yeah, that's like three feet long. Um, that is not gonna even come close to reaching uh, wh where I need to plug it in from here. Okay, yes, luckily I'm using a newer Android phone that takes USB Type-C, so I'm gonna be using this one instead because this is just way more slack to work with rather than this teeny tiny little, <laughs> little cable they give you with it. All right, moment of truth. Let's just plug it in and see if we get power over USB. All right, plugged it in and nothing, no signs of life here. Let me try the other port. Oh, haha, you know what? There's a power switch on it, uh, duh. So that's probably why I'm not getting any power. And let's give it the power switch. Hey, all right, lights up. We get a little uh, splash screen there and then, all right, cool. So yeah, it looks like our monitor buttons for uh, inputs one or two are on by default. I can turn them off individually. That's really cool. And then you can do a stereo monitor. Yeah, for inputs three or four. Awesome, all right. Okay, here, I'm gonna do the, the peel. And let's get this thing off of here. And hopefully that'll cut down on the glare and reflections that you see. All right, so at least we've got power. We know the unit works, it powers up and everything. So now let's see how easy or difficult it is to locate the drivers uh, from the website, download them, install them, see if there's any other updates or anything we need to do uh, to get this thing up and running on day one. Okay, so let's just try this from kind of square one. Let's just see where uh, Motu's website is. I'm just gonna Google Motu and uh, motu.com home, there we go. All right, so do we go to support or download? Support or download, support or downloads? Let's try downloads. Product downloads for Motu M series installer for M2 and M4, okay. So I am gonna download, yep, for Windows. And let's just run it and see what happens. This will install, blah, 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 okay. Uh, I accept the agreement, let's install. And to complete installation, must restart your computer. Um, I'm gonna say no. Let's see if it works without restarting because uh, it's gonna kill my screen capture and all that stuff. I'll just set some stuff back up. So I would much, much rather <laughs> not have to reboot. Most of the time you don't have to anyways. This is not an installer, it's just a control panel. Okay. All right, I thought it was gonna be kind of like native instruments where it wanted to, you know, help us locate all the free software we get and all that stuff, but I guess not, so. Just kind of like always, I'm not gonna um, really bother with Digital Performer or uh, Ableton Live Lite. Um, I, I'm just not familiar with those, so rather than turn this into a video of watching me, uh, you know, fumble along and try to figure out how to work those, I'm gonna use what I know how to use, which is Reaper. Uh, you use, you know, whatever you're comfortable with. Let's fire up Reaper. He's already up and going. And I think what I'm gonna wanna do is go to Options, Preferences, uh, I want to tell it to use this Motu. So if I go to audio and device, uh, yes, we are going to use SEO system instead of my interface. Hey, look at that. Here is a Motu M series. Uh, we're going to enable inputs one through four. Oh, hey, check that out. It's got loop back. That's kind of cool. We'll talk about that later. And I'm going to pick outputs one through four. Uh, I'll try the request uh, sample rate and block size. Um, actually, you know what? Let's not do that here. Let's see how the control panel, I'm gonna click on SEO configuration here, and that should bring up that same control panel that we just saw. Yep. And then we can pick our sample rate and buffer size from here. So I'm gonna leave it at 48K since I'm doing video stuff. Um, you know, 44.1 is usually fine. Uh, if you have some specific need, you can always pick something higher. It goes up to 192,000 uh, samples per second, which is you know fairly standard uh, anymore. So I'm gonna leave it at 48K. Um, I know a 256 sample buffer is gonna yield too much latency for most of what I like to do. 
So let's start with 128 samples uh, for our buffer, buffer size. And I guess from here, we can just say, okay. And if we go up here and look, you know, this is just Reaper reporting back to us what our settings are. So 48 kilohertz, 24 bit wave, four in, four out, 128 samples at holy moly, 2.8 milliseconds in and eight milliseconds out. Hmm. That's interesting. So that is amazing input latency for 128 sample buffer size under three milliseconds. But this is really heavily weighted to a really fast input, like a remarkably fast input latency and a pretty crappy output latency. So let's just play just real quick and let's go back to SEO configuration and let's set it to like a 64 sample buffer. So that should cut that latency down. And yeah, a, a millisecond and a half in, which is remarkable uh, over USB, the, probably the fastest I've ever seen. That's even faster than my RME for input. But again, the output is kind of crappy. <laughs> so four millisecond out. Hmm. Let's just come up with a simple project here to just illustrate recording. I don't know, you know, we'll do some, uh, maybe some drums, some bass guitar, some acoustic guitar through a microphone. We'll do some electric guitar through a microphone. We'll probably record some real drums through it since we have four channels to work with. We can get like a four mic uh, drum setup. And of course, maybe some vocals. I'm not exactly a world uh, class vocalist by any means. So I'm always a little hesitant to record vocals on these reviews, but that's one of the main things that, that you are gonna be using this for more than likely. Uh, so I gotta do what I gotta do. So I guess first things first, I need a beat to play to. So what I'm gonna do for now, just for kind of some scratch drums, um, I'll create a new track and I'll just call it electric drums. And uh, just for something to keep tempo, something to play along with. So I will probably toss an instance of Superior Drummer on here. So I got SD3 installed. Come on, big boy, you can do it. Oh my goodness, it just crashed Reaper. Thanks, Superior Drummer. Uh, that hadn't happened for a while. I honestly thought they had fixed that either uh, Reaper or TuneTrack had fixed that, but apparently not. For you to be able to hear what I'm doing, I'm gonna just plug the the uh, main outputs. I'm gonna put a couple of TRS uh, cables from the main out into my other audio interface. And for me to hear what I'm doing, I am just gonna plug headphones into the front here and monitor off of that. I'm gonna use my little MIDI controller back here, and I'm just gonna tap in something simple, just something to keep tempo with uh, as we start piling on some instruments. Okay, let me get this mic into position to uh, record an acoustic guitar. And we'll do that real quick and then move on. And I'm just gonna start strumming some chords and get the uh, gain set. All right, too much. Let's turn them down. All right, so first I'm gonna try the uh, direct monitor. So uh, here I'm gonna go all the way to input. Uh, that's on our, our direct monitor blend. So all the way to input, so I'm only listening to direct monitor here. So I'm just gonna activate direct monitor. And we get our little indicator here. All right, and I think you can hear me and I can hear me as well. And I think now I'm actually just gonna uh, monitor through software here. So in order to do that, I'm gonna turn this all the way to playback and I'm gonna get rid of monitoring here. So now we we're just hearing ourselves through Reaper, through software. And uh, here, let's see. And you know, I don't notice any noticeable latency or anything. So we're going all through software. So we're going from microphone into the unit, analog to digital, into the computer, and then playback, and then digital to analog, 
back through uh, the headphones. So that's an input and output latency added together. And even though it's re, you know, reporting a millisecond and a half in, four milliseconds out, I don't really notice any. Yeah, honestly, sounds pretty good to me. All right, let's try a little recording. All right, yeah, I got a couple of flubs in there. Uh, I guess I'll just kind of fix those uh, later on. So just in the interest of keeping moving forward here, let's move on and let's record a little bit of uh, bass guitar direct into it. All right, I got my bass guitar here. It's just a passive uh, precision bass. And okay, uh, I guess let's, uh, let's try the mic instrument, uh, or what do they call it? Mic line guitar. Uh, so let's try it in here. One end goes to the base, and the other end goes here. Now, one thing I don't see is, so it said it was mic, line, or guitar. I don't see like a switch to tell it, now that we've plugged in to the quarter inch, I don't see a switch to tell it whether it's line level or instrument level. So let's see what happens. I guess I'm just going to leave the, the gain knob halfway up here and turn the volume up on my bass, hit a note. Okay. Okay. Uh, I guess it understands that, did I miss something on the back here or something? Because I, I don't think that I saw any sort of a switch between line level and instrument level. So, okay, I guess we'll see. Uh, I'll be kind of curious to plug something line level into this. So we know, okay, like instrument level, yeah. Like, you know, our, our meters are peaking about where we would expect. Okay, all right. So let me get a little bit of volume so we can hear what we're doing. Gonna create a new track and let's just call it bass. And yeah, we're just gonna monitor through here. He's gonna be input mono number two. That's where we plugged in. Let's arm him for recording. Hey, all right. Okay, all right. Honestly, that sounds pretty darn good through uh, just going direct in, no DI box required. Okay, uh, what can we do next? I tell you what, let's lay down some electric guitar over the top of this. And uh, rather than using amp sims and going direct in, um, I can just crank an amp up. So let's mic a guitar amp and let's lay down, I don't know, two, three uh, different uh, electric guitar tracks on top of this, all right? Okay, so what I've got over there, and I'll show a quick shot of it, um, I've got my uh, Telecaster plugged into a uh, Mesa Lone Star Special, and I've got a Cascade Fathead ribbon mic just dead center on the uh, dust cap of the speaker. Uh, I'm going into input number one here. Uh, I've got his gain, you know, just about halfway up, so I'm just going to turn the volume on the guitar up and take a strum. <laughs> Okay. And, uh, you know, honestly, the gain looks pretty good. Okay, here it is the next night. I uh, had some technical difficulties. I thought I'd lost some footage. Uh, turns out I didn't, um, but I, I just got frustrated and, and I just kind of ran out of steam. <laughs> so, so much for getting this all done in day one right out of the box, right? So I'm uh, definitely not wearing the same 
shirt that I was wearing yesterday that I also slept in. You're wearing the same shirt from yesterday. Shut up. <laughs> so uh, I guess we'll just pick up right where we uh, left off here. So this is the uh, Fathead uh, ribbon mic uh, on the Fender 68 Custom Deluxe Reverb with the uh, Jazzmaster. That's why it's so darn noisy. These uh, single coil pickups are pretty, uh, pretty noisy. All right, I can't quite tell if that's uh, just like distorting the ribbon on the mic or if that's distorting the preamp. Let me go turn it down a little bit and try it again. Okay, yeah, that was actually uh, distorting the preamp even though uh, it wasn't showing any clipping. It was actually, uh, it was clipping all right. You know, you could hear it. All right, but before I set up drums, I mean, I can get the kit and everything set up, but what I'm planning on doing is using a four microphone setup. Uh, and as you notice, you know, we, we've only got two microphone preamps on this thing, but we do have four total inputs. So what I can use in this kind of situation is something like this. Whoops. <laughs> something like this. This is a, a FMR RNP the really nice preamp. So this is just a kind of no frills, uh, two channel uh, standalone preamp. And so this does actually have mic preamps uh, built into it. So I can plug a couple of mics into here and then just take line outs of here uh, of the, the preamp and feed them into line inputs. Oh my goodness, I got too many cables. I'm, a, I'm dragging stuff around here. So, um, but I can basically put them into these two right here, the line in three and four. And that's uh, just kind of a quick handy way to get more preamps onto this interface or any interface that has spare line inputs. Okay, so I am gonna go from uh, out A and uh, I'll do that into line input three and out B We'll go into line input number four. So I'm gonna get the drum set up. We'll dream up some sort of a four mic setup to do and uh, use all four of those inputs at once and see what we end up with. Okay, I got all the mics plugged in here. I've got the gains all turned all the way down because I haven't uh, set gains yet. We'll see how it goes. See if there's enough headroom. I've got the two overheads plugged in here and then the kick and snare plugged in here. So I'm just gonna go start bashing on the kit a little bit and keep an eye on these uh, meters. I'll have to turn this to where I can see it from across the room because unfortunately I don't have a setup where I can just have this right next to me, which would be so convenient. Or to have an assistant, that'd be great too. Life goals. Honestly, this thing handled it pretty well. Um, you know, you can kind of see where I ended up with the gains set here. I could have turned the overheads down just a little bit more, uh, but yeah, there's still enough headroom there for something as loud as drums going through, you know, large diaphragm condenser microphones. That's pretty much one of the loudest things you can do in your, in your home studio. And yeah, this thing handled it fine. As far as I can tell, it sounds good. Um, you know, the, the overheads, you know, the, the cymbals really kind of sounded crisp and, you know, came through pretty darn well. Um, I'm actually pretty happy with how this thing performed for recording drums. 
Okay, just real quick, uh, you know, before I actually do record vocals, I've got my Lewitt LCT440 plugged in, and uh, I'm just gonna just send it through here so we can all kind of listen to how it sounds. Test, test, test. Hey, all right. I can actually hear it. Uh, let me get the gain set here. Test, test, one, two, test. I can't see the uh, meter from here. All right, there we go. Test, test, one, two, test. Okay. All right, getting a nice kind of strong signal. Test, test, test. You know, clipping if I get a little too loud, so we'll turn it down just a little bit. But I think it sounds nice. I think it sounds really good, really pleasant, at least through headphones. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell when you're monitoring yourself, you know, to really have an objective uh, view of how things sound. But I'm going to record a bunch of vocals here, and then I'll do a little bit of hand percussion and call this thing done. So hopefully what you're about to see is uh, the, you know, the finished project with at least a little bit of mixing and compression and EQ and all that stuff going on. All right, let's give this a try. All right, holy moly, got the whole thing tracked there. Um, honestly, I have no idea how I'm gonna edit this down. I said that last time too, and I got it down to half an hour, but man, I've got like five hours of footage of playing around with this interface here. So I'll try my best to get it down to, you know, a cool 30 minutes-ish, and uh, we'll kind of see how that goes. All right, so final thoughts here on just kind of day one and day two of playing around with this interface. I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with it so far. Uh, the, just listening back while tracking, you know, listening to all the backing tracks as I'm layering over the top of it, like, I'm actually kind of surprised. It does actually sound better than any of the other interfaces that I've used, you know, in, in, in this kind of price range.
Now, this one, one thing I hadn't mentioned yet, you know, price. So almost all of the interfaces, the two by two interfaces I've reviewed on this channel have been, you know, right around that $150 uh, US dollar kind of mark. And this guy is priced just a little bit higher, you know, for a, so this is a four in four out. The two in two out version of this retails for about $170 US as opposed to 150 for most of the other two by twos. And this one I got uh, from Sam Ash through Amazon for about $210 for the four in four out version. I think all in all, that's a really good price point. I actually went into this with a little bit of apprehension because my experiences with Mark of the Unicorn um, have not been very good. Um, I owned one of their interfaces briefly for about a week and it was, it, it didn't like my computer at the time. They just didn't get along. There were all sorts of problems. It was a huge pain in the butt. Uh, I sent it back and that's when I got my RME interface. That RME interface plugged right into my, that same computer and worked perfectly. You know, never threw a fit or anything. I have to say, this has impressed the pants off me. This thing is actually pretty darn good. And it, all of these, you know, kind of entry level interfaces to me have all sounded very similar. On the, on the M4 here, I don't know if it's the preamps or the converters that are kind of making the difference. I do actually hear a difference. Um, I, I, who knows, it could be psychosomatic, it could just be my imagination. As I listen to these tracks more, as I mix them, uh, I, I'll get kind of a better idea. As far as features and everything, yeah, I wish it had two more preamps. It's a four in, four out interface. I wish that it, they could have just squeezed two more preamps on there and it would have uh, negated the you know necessity to plug another box into it to get another couple of preamps to record four channels of drums. Um, headphones, uh, the, yeah, the headphones have been plenty loud. Uh, I have to hand it to them. Like uh, I haven't had the headphones cranked at all during recording drums, recording electric guitar, you know, all this monitoring and everything. Um, almost all of the other interfaces that I've reviewed, uh, I've had to pretty much crank that headphone uh, volume all the way up. This seems to have you know, headphone volume to spare. I think the, the, the real winner, other than just the, the sound quality, is the front panel display. I mean, you know, look at this thing. It's just gorgeous. Nobody else in this price range has anything as attractive and as functional as this readout for input and output. I mean, that's just terrific. I hope that this is a trend that catches on and everybody starts doing this because honestly, everybody in home studio deserves to have metering as useful as this instead of just a little dot that turns colors. And this, I hope, is the future of metering on audio interfaces. Now it does have, you know, the five pin MIDI in and out, which is missing on some of the interfaces in this price range. So that's a good plus. The USB-C connectivity uh, seems to be fine. You know, the, the drivers and latency and everything, yeah, seem to be pretty good. Um, they, they, they call them, you know, best in class, but uh, eh, I mean, that output latency was a little kind of crazy. Uh, the input latency, excellent, you know, better than any other USB interface. Even my RME is faster input than even that but that output latency kind of negates it all. So it ends up being pretty much average latency for all the other interfaces that I've used. Uh, the included cable, yeah, that was too short. They need to include a longer cable. I don't know why they just included a little three foot cable. So I really didn't see any features or any problems that held me back. Anything that stood in my way of doing what we all want to do, which is just make music in our home studios. All right, I think that's going to do it for me this time. I, oh boy, this is going to be one heck of an editing process. So this might take me a week or so to get the song mixed and get five hours of video footage all trimmed down to hopefully a digestible half an hour or so. Well, thanks so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I hope this has been a little informative. If you got your eye on this interface, hopefully this gives you a little bit of perspective on whether it's right for you or not. All right, well, I think that's gonna do it for me this time and I'll see you guys next time.